An airplane can fly in the air because of the lift force acting on its wings. The cross-section shape of an airplane wing is called an airfoil. This is an example of an airfoil. When a wing goes through the air, it creates a streamlined flow around it. Relative to the wing, the streamlined airflow is like this. Above the wing, there is constriction. See how the streamlines are sort of squeezed together? Because of the equation of continuity, constriction means the flow speed increases. Below the wing, the opposite happens. See how the streamlines are not as dense? This means the flow speed decreases slightly below the wing. According to Bernoulli's principle, the faster flow above means lower pressure above the wing, and the slower flow below means higher pressure below the wing. This pressure difference is the one that provides the lift force to the wing. This animation shows airflow around an airfoil. The dots move with the flow. As you can see, the dots just above the wing spread out more because they move faster. The dots just below the wing are closer together because they move more slowly. Now let's try a problem. A jumbo jet has a total wing area of 525 meters squared. If the effective air speed is 290 meters per second above the wings and 240 meters per second below the wings, what is the lift force on the jet due to Bernoulli's principle? The density of air at the jet's altitude of 11,000 meters is about 0.366 kilograms per meter cubed. We have a flowing fluid problem, so I'm going to use Bernoulli's equation again. Let's say above the wings it's 1, below the wings it's 2. Above the wings, we have pressure P1, and we have air flowing, so the density of the air, 0.366. Above the wings, 290, so it's 290 squared. Above and below the wings, there is not much height difference. So I'm just going to say y1 and y2, they're about equal, so these two terms, they can cancel. Now, below the wings, the pressure is P2. And uh, again, the air density is 0.366. Below the wings, the speed is 240, so 240 squared. Now, we have one equation with two unknowns. We cannot find P1, we cannot find P2, but we can find the pressure difference. So I can find P1 minus P2. I just have to move P2 to this side and move this term to the other side. So I will have 1 half times 0 0.366 times 240 squared minus this term, 1 half times 0 0.366 times 290 squared. And I can factor out the 1 half 0.366 and uh, I can do the calculation of 240 squared minus 290 squared. And this will give me negative 4850. It is negative, but it's okay because uh, to find the lift force, we just have to use the pressure difference times the area. And uh, I'm just going to drop the sign and use the amount of pressure difference, which is uh, 4850 times the wing area. This uh, wing area includes both wings, so it's just uh, 525. And this will give us, uh, if I round it, I'll get 2.546 times 10 to the 6 newtons. Another way to explain the lift force acting on the wings of an airplane is to just use Newton's laws of motion. Let's take a look at how the airflow gets bent by the airplane wing. The airflow used to be going this way and it gets bent that way. If we compare this bending of the airflow to the bending of a ball, let's say the ball comes in that direction first and then it gets hit so it changes its direction of travel to this direction. That means uh, if you're the person who hits the ball, 
you would hit the ball in this direction, which means the airplane wing must exert a force on the airflow in that same direction to change the direction of the airflow. And the air would exert a force, equal and opposite force, back onto the airplane wing that way. And that's the lift force.